An unknown town, Niruko Juraya and Goku were at the entrance of an area near several inns, restaurants and casinos. This place seems to be very lively, said Goku, who admired the place. Yes, it's perfect, said the lustful Sanin who stared at the brothel of the place. Control yourself pervert, Niruko said angrily. Hey, miss, you wouldn't be interested in a job around here? I have a lot of benefits and great economic payments, said one of the owners of the casinos who approached Niruko with a business card and a bunny suit. In the other hand, I'm 13 years old Niruko shouted loudly, scaring the subject. I'm sorry despite your short stature, I thought that with your physical attractiveness, I thought you were of legal age, said the casino owner. Don't be like that, Niruko, he's right, you have a very beautiful body, Goku said with a big smile, trying to calm the Yuzumaki who blushed at what her fiancé said. I know I'm very attractive, but I only belong to you, my dear Goku, Niruko replied somewhat embarrassed. Jiraiya thought, it seems she's still quite innocent in these matters. She's aware of her physical attractiveness, but is more inclined to humility than flaunting it. It reminds me of my former teammate when she was young. The casino owner continued to apologize, saying, I'm sorry again. It's just that you resemble a woman who recently declined a job offer, so I saw another opportunity. Jiraiya inquired, did he mention if there was a woman who looked like her around here? The casino owner nodded indeed. A beautiful blonde woman is currently playing dice in my casino he pointed toward the entrance, encouraging the three Kanoha ninjas, who quickly entered the establishment after expressing their gratitude. Interior of the casino, dice playing area. Inside the casino, in the dice playing area, they spotted a blonde woman accompanied by a young lady with dark hair, who was cradling a small pig in her arms. Both of them were deeply engrossed in the game, wagering a significant bet on the dice. Two pairs, you win declared the casino employee as he checked the dice, and then gestured towards the blonde. You did it, Lady Tsunade, exclaimed the girl accompanying Tsunade. I can't see that, Shizune. Luck is on my side tonight, Tsunade replied, taking a sip of her sake. I see you're up to your usual antics, a voice behind the two women said. They turned around to find Juraya accompanied by two children. Damn, what are you doing here, you pervert? Tsunade asked, her eyebrows raised. Let's grab a meal and chat for a while, the old pervert suggested, inviting the two women to a nearby restaurant. Minutes later in a restaurant, everyone sat around a large table, in a somewhat uncomfortable atmosphere. Well, what do you want? Sunaid asked in a serious and somewhat offensive tone. Don't be rude, the old pervert is being courteous, Niruko scolded, critiquing the Sanin's behavior along with her disciple. God, I get it, Lady Tsunaid. You abandoned your daughter, and now Lord Juraya wants you to take responsibility, Shizune blurted out, alarmed, receiving a tickle from her teacher. Don't say stupid things. This kid has nothing to do with me. Sunaid shouted angrily. Don't get angry. It's just that she looks so much alike. Both blonde and busty, Shizune added, rubbing her head where she had a sizable bump. Who are you calling busty? The two blondes shouted simultaneously, then glanced at each other for a few seconds before striking up a conversation. Do you also get annoyed by perverts and jealous women? The Sanin asked. Yes, and do you suffer from back pain when you walk, or because your bra isn't the right size? Niruko inquired with uncertainty. Yes, Sunaid replied, a tear forming in her left eye. What's wrong with them? Goku asked, his cheeks puffed up with food. Well, I'd say it's the empathy of two dairy cows, the wise pervert next to Goku commented. Let's be friends, the two blondes said simultaneously hugging each other after realizing they had a lot in common. Can we get back to the conversation? Jiraiya interjected, interrupting the two blondes, who felt like they had found their soulmates. Subsequently, the wise pervert recounted to Tsunade and Shizune what had transpired since the sand and sound village attack during the Chunin exams, the Root Rebellion, and the death of Danzo Shimura, who had transformed into a powerful but brainless monster. It sounds incredibly exciting, but there seem to be many inconsistencies in your story. The Sanin said skeptically. What do you mean? Questioned the old pervert. How did they defeat that super monster? Sunade asked, receiving an answer from Niruko and Jiraiya, who both pointed at a chibi version of Goku with swollen cheeks, who was still eating. Is this some kind of joke? Sunade inquired. He's so adorable, like a little, tender monkey. Shizune exclaimed, unable to resist and hugging the chibi Goku, who looked like a stuffed animal in Sunade's disciple's arms. Hey, let go of him. Niruko said angrily, come on, calm down, I'm just enjoying the moment, Shizune responded, refusing to release the Saiyan, 
Let him go Niruko insisted, trying to pull our hero's arm, won't leave him, and be careful not to accidentally take a peek at someone with those huge breasts, Shizun retorted, still not willing to let go. At least I have them, Niruko shot back, I think, I think, I think I'm going, I'm going to vomit, Goku suddenly exclaimed, turning pale and quickly breaking free to rush to the bathroom, leaving Niruko and Shizun giving each other furious looks. What's wrong with Shizun? Jiraiya asked. Ah uh, it's just that she has a soft spot for small and cute things, Sunade explained. Anyway, the old man has chosen you to be the new Hawkage, that's why we've come looking for you. The perverted Sanin informed Sunade. How foolish. I don't want to waste my time with the Hawkage position, Sunade replied sarcastically, which infuriated Niruko, who demanded to know the reason for her quick rejection. Calm down, mini-me. I merely said I don't want the position, there's no rule obliging me to accept being Hawkage. Sunade clarified. By the way who are you? Don't tell me I was cloned by Orochimaru? Sunade questioned with some surprise. I'm not your clone. Why does everyone say that to Emi Niruko shouted furiously. She's Niruko Yuzumaki, Kushina's daughter. The wise pervert replied. So she's alive? Sunade asked in astonishment, receiving a nod from both Kanoha ninjas, which made Sunade feel a bit happier knowing that she had a connection with the matriarch Yuzumaki. Okay, that explains why we look alike to some extent, but it doesn't mean I'm ready to accept the Hawkage title, Sunade declared with an arched eyebrow, further fueling Niruko's frustration. Even if we're friends, I won't give up. I challenge you to a duel, and if I win, you'll become the Hawkage. If I lose, I'll be your slave forever, Niruko declared furiously. All right, but instead of being my slave, you'll become my new disciple, despite your mouth. I like you a lot, Sunade replied with an arrogant smile, on the outskirts of the restaurant. Niruko and Sunade locked eyes, preparing for their duel to resolve the conflict once and for all. Great, they just need to fight in bikinis and a mud pit, Jiraiya commented crudely. His remark earned him a punch in the face and a low blow from both Kunoichis, doubling him over in pain as they turned their attention back to the fight. Ouch, they applied the nutcracker move thought the old pervert, protecting his sensitive areas, while he was on the ground, trying to recover from the pain. Oh, God. I feel much better now Goku said, rubbing his stomach as he left the restaurant. What are they doing? Goku asked. A pointless and peculiar duel between well-endowed women, that's all, Shizun replied, crouching down and playing with one of Goku's hair spikes. Back in the fight, Niruko lunged at Tsunade, engaging in a fierce Teijutsu duel. Not bad mini-me. You've got some impressive moves, Sunade remarked as she blocked Niruko's attacks. This is just the beginning, Niruko shouted, launching a kick at Sunade's face. Sunade blocked it with her left arm and retaliated with a right hand strike to Niruko's face, sending her flying into a nearby trash can outside the restaurant. That was easy, Sunade boasted. I wouldn't be so sure, Goku commented, catching the attention of Sunade, who looked at him as if he were crazy. Suddenly, Niruko burst out of the trash can and appeared in front of Tsunade, leaving her perplexed. How did her speed suddenly increase like that? Tsunade wondered. You're strong, so I won't hold back. Take this. Jan Ken Pawn, Niruko exclaimed, launching an attack aimed at Tsunade's eyes. Tsunade managed to block it just in time. I've got you now Niruko declared, throwing a punch at Tsunade's face. Tsunade blocked it with her forearm, and then they separated from each other. That's enough. If this continues, no one will come out of it unscathed, Jiraiya intervened with a commanding and serious voice. Anyway, I'm already bored, Sunade said, starting to walk toward her hotel, followed by Shizun. Are you running away? Naruko asked. Ha don't get too cocky, mini-me. I've been holding back the whole time. If you want, we'll settle this another day, Sunade replied, continuing on her way. That woman is incredibly strong, Goku thought, wearing a half-smile. Is Lady Sunade okay? asked her disciple. Why wouldn't I be replied Sunade, beginning to rub her arm slightly. That kid is really strong. She managed to numb my arm with that punch. Who taught her such a technique? Sunade wondered, pondering what had happened during their fight. The next day, Goku and Niruko stood in a green area in front of Jiraiya, who had decided it was time to train them. First, he handed Niruko a water-filled balloon and instructed her to focus on chakra rotation and manipulation, compressing it into an air sphere. The Sanin demonstrated the technique by trying it on a tree leaving a hole in it. Niruko eagerly attempted the technique with the balloon. Later, Jiraiya retrieved the scroll from Mount Mayaboku and took Goku to a location where their training wouldn't cause much destruction. 
All right, first, we need to perform the blood contract, the old pervert explained as he opened the scroll. Hey, is that technique you taught Niruko really powerful? Goku inquired. It's a class A jutsu, so yes, it's quite powerful, replied Jiraiya. Goku then raised his hand, recalling the technique Jiraiya had shown him, and successfully generated a sphere of compressed air in his palm. What's this technique called? Goku asked, catching the Sanin's attention. Jiraiya was completely shocked to see Goku replicate the technique after just one demonstration. It's called the Rasengan, Jiraiya stuttered in response. I see Goku acknowledged, releasing the sphere. How did you manage to do it so easily? Jiraiya exclaimed, thoroughly impressed. Well, I'm good at copying others' techniques, Goku replied. He then raised his right hand again, and created a powerful electric shock. That, that, that's Kakashi's lightning blade, Jiraiya stammered, falling to the ground in astonishment. It's actually quite easy to do once or twice, Goku said, demonstrating the technique again. He's an incredible monster. I shudder to think how much more he could evolve over time. Jiraiya thought to himself as he handed Goku the scroll to complete the blood contract. Meanwhile, in an area near their training, Orochimaru, Kabuto, and the sound for observing Goku and Jiraiya. It's impressive, very impressive, Orochimaru commented, his eyes filled with a thirst for power. Lord Orochimaru, no matter how I look at it, I don't think we can do anything against him. Jirabo expressed, his voice tinged with fear. This fool is right, that Saiyan doesn't seem to have any weak points, Teiwaya added. You're mistaken, my dear Teiwaya. He has many weaknesses, to be precise, he has seven, and one of them is right here, or Chimaru stated, licking his lips as he gazed in the direction of the Yuzumaki in the distance. Well Kabuto, and I will stay to capture Goku, and the four of you will carry out the mission to bring Sasuke back, or Chimaru ordered his subjects. But my lord, are you sure about this? Kid questioned, uncertain. Yes, I have an alley, or Chimaru revealed. The previous night, he had met Tsunade and informed her about the Edo Tensei, Jutsu, promising to revive her deceased boyfriend Dan Kato and her brother Naki in exchange for helping him capture Goku. Tsunade reluctantly agreed to this proposition. Well then, be on your way or Chimaru ordered. I'm not a fool. I have no intention of meeting my end at that Saiyan's hands, Teiwaya thought to herself as she walked away with her companions. Her loyalty to the evil Sanin was starting to waver. Back with Goku and Jiraiya. After successfully making the contract, Goku summoned the gigantic toad, Gamabunta. Who has summoned me the massive toad inquired. It was me, Goku replied. All right, let's begin the test to see if you're worthy of me, Gamabunta declared. He then asked Goku to ride on his back, and told him that if he could endure long enough, he would acknowledge him as his summoner. Now shouted the giant toad as he leaped high into the air, and began moving vigorously, attempting to make Goku lose his balance. Wow this is really fun. It reminds me a bit of the flying Nimbus, Goku thought as he enjoyed the ride on the huge toad. It's not over yet, warned Gamabunta, as he descended to the ground, and started shaking even more violently. This is great! More, come on! Goku exclaimed, thoroughly enjoying himself. Thirty minutes later, Gamabunta eventually fell to the ground, panting heavily, and completely exhausted. Are you tired yet? Goku asked, somewhat disappointed. You, you. You won, the giant toad managed to say, accepting defeat and acknowledging Goku as his summoner. Then, he vanished in a cloud of smoke. I did it, Goku cheered, thrilled that he had acquired the summoning ability. Yes, yes, we're done, Jiraiya grumbled, feeling a bit annoyed. He started to walk in search of Niruko, followed by the still elated Goku. However, they were suddenly ambushed by Shizune, Tsunade's disciple. Meanwhile, with Niruko, Niruko found herself in a dire situation having been attacked by Kabuto and Orochimaru, who intended to use her as bait to lure Goku. Damn, I won't be able to take on both of them at the same time, Niruko thought. She was injured on her face and arms, experiencing sharp pains that made it difficult to defend herself. Don't resist, brat, or I'll have to mark that pretty little face of yours, Kabuto threatened with malevolence. Don't worry, Kabuto, she's just bait, we don't need her to be in perfect condition, Orochimaru chimed in with an evil grin. I know my lord, but it wouldn't hurt to make her a bit more cooperative, Kabuto said mockingly, twirling a kune in the air to showcase his skills. Darn it. I might have to use the Kayubi Kaoken to win this, Niruko contemplated, preparing to execute her technique. Suddenly, a kune landed near Orochimaru and Kabuto. They turned to see Tsunade, who had grown tired of her former teammate's antics. 
She pretended to accept Orochimaru's deal only to get close enough to kill him. Sunaid, you traitor, Orochimaru shouted as he lunged at the third Sanin, who met him with a powerful punch to the face. You miserable wretch. I'm going to end you, Sunaid yelled, initiating a flurry of blows against Orochimaru, while Kabuto defended his master. Shut up, old woman, or I'll disembowel you. Kabuto said threateningly. What if I do that to you? asked a voice behind them, none other than Goku, accompanied by Jiraiya and Shizune. Can he do it? Don't think this is over. I will kill you all, shouted Orochimaru as he bit his thumb to perform a summoning jutsu, calling a powerful snake. You won't get away with it, Sunaid and Jiraiya declared, preparing to perform the invocation jutsu. However, they were stopped by Goku, who stood in front of them. He's mine. Take Niruko and go back to the village, Goku said very seriously. Don't say stupid things, brat. He is very powerful and Sunaid couldn't finish her sentence when she saw Goku's cold and penetrating look. He was extremely enraged by the attack on his fiance. Sunaid, let's go said Jiraiya, carrying Niruko, who was not very hurt, but didn't want to take risks. Hey I can walk, Niruko claimed. Shut up. Remember what happened in the village with that huge golden dragon, said the wise pervert, which sent a shiver through Niruko. The old man hugged her tightly and they hurried toward the nearby town. Send your attacks, Orochimaru commanded. The huge snake complied, attacking Goku at lightning speed. Goku stopped the snake's attack with one hand, causing the ground beneath him to crack slightly. Damn, said the snake, which was kicked in the face by Goku and sent flying to a nearby grassy area. Lord Orochimaru, Kabuto said with concern as he approached his teacher. I'm fine said the evil Sanin, preparing to fight again. I'm sick of you always bothering me, harassing me and now messing with what is very important to me, but even so I'll grant your sickly dreams before you, and your pathetic henchmen die, I will fulfill your desire, you want to see the power of a god, I will show you a god, in 10 seconds, everything will end in 10 seconds, declared Goku with an unearthly voice, as he walked slowly, his penetrating look, and pupils took on a bright blue color, 10, 9, 8, 7, Goku counted slowly, what's going on, Kabuto asked, terrified, I don't know but I think it's better to escape, Kabuto said, equally scared. 5, 4, 3, 2 Goku continued counting. Shut up, he's mine, and I won't leave without him, said Orochimaru, who threw himself at Goku. Don't be and stupid, come back, Kabuto shouted with terror and despair. 1, too late, they die said Goku, the last part filled with coldness and cruelty, his hair bristling and turning blue. My god was all Orochimaru could say before witnessing what happened. Kabuto, get behind Emi. Orochimaru shouted to his disciple as he bit his two thumbs. In the vicinity of the town, Jiraiya ran with Niruko in his arms, followed closely by Tsunade and Shizune. Listen, that's enough. They're crazy. Why do we have to get so far away exclaimed Tsunade, who stopped. You'll understand soon, said Niruko, still in Jiraiya's arms, glancing back at the ongoing battle. Suddenly, a portentous and monstrous explosion was heard, causing a gigantic earthquake that shook much of the territory. This was followed by a huge column of blue light that pierced the sky, dissipating the clouds. Mother of God, Shizun said with fear as she saw the colossal column of energy. It's, it's, apocalyptic, Sunaid stuttered, watching as the column of light contracted and transformed into a majestic mushroom-shaped cloud of smoke, its hurricane-like winds buffeting them. However, they held tightly to the ground, concentrating their chakras on their feet. What is this? Sunaid shouted. The power of a god, Sunaid. The power of god, replied Jiraiya, clutching his goddaughter tightly to prevent her from being blown away. Back to the combat zone. The battleground had turned into a monstrous, arid, and blackened crater, with Goku at its center. He had returned to normal after unleashing his attack. I think I overdid it, but that guy really angered me, Goku said as he walked around the crater. He found the charred skull of the gigantic snake, which had disintegrated due to his powerful attack. He also discovered large debris of steel, and stone shaped like demon faces, resembling three broken doors. If I remember correctly, this must be the famous triple rash summoning that Anko told me about. That guy must have used it as a last resort to protect himself and escape, Goku thought. He knew that both Kabuto and Orochimaru had survived his attack, but they didn't come out unscathed. That much he was sure of. Meanwhile, in an unknown area, Orochimaru and Kabuto had escaped the battlefield by using a hidden jutsu to transport themselves beneath the ground. That was the most horrifying thing I've ever witnessed in my entire miserable life, 
Kabuto said, still shaken by the experience. My body can't stop shaking. That transformation was vastly different from what he showed us during the invasion, and against Shikabane, where Chimaru said, his two arms mutilated as a sacrifice for performing the triple rash summoning. I think it's better to resign my lord. No matter how hard we try we can't beat him, Kabuto said with resignation. Close your mouth, I will not give up. What I've just witnessed only fuels my desire for that body. With it, I won't just dominate this world the sky the earth, and the realm of the dead all will tremble at the name of Orochimaru, the evil Sanin declared in a maniacal and mad tone, making it clear he had lost his sanity. I still think it's a mistake, Kabuto muttered under his breath. I don't want to hear suggestions from someone who wet his pants, after what he saw Orochimaru retorted, noticing the stain on Kabuto's crotch. He then concentrated and vomited a copy of himself, no longer injured. This jutsu is reaching its limits. I need a new body, Orochimaru thought, deciding to retreat to his hiding place with the hope that the Sound Four could complete their mission. As those who ruled us in the heavens have decided to come down to Earth and live among mortals, what will happen when they face each other while we witness it? Orochimaru philosophically pondered what would happen to the ninja. World of Goku encountered someone whose strength could rival his. Back to the village where Niruko and the others were, Tsunade treated Niruko's injuries, trying to overcome her hemophobia while using a medical jutsu on the girl. Niruko waited anxiously for Goku's arrival. Hello are you okay Goku surprised everyone by appearing behind them. Goku, it's good to see you're well, Niruko said, hugging the Saiyan, who smiled in response. Did you manage to defeat them? The wise pervert asked, approaching Goku. No they escaped. They used the giant snake and a jutsu as shields. Goku replied, a serious expression on his face. I understand, Jiraiya said. You're incredible, and you're also adorable, Shizun said, crouching and playfully running her finger through Goku's hair, sparking a duel of looks between Niruko and Tsunade's disciple. Ha 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 ha, Tsunade burst into laughter, capturing everyone's attention. It seems that things in the village have been quite interesting since I left, Tsunade said with a broad smile. I know it's hasty to ask for your answer after everything that just happened, but what do you think about becoming the fifth Hawkage? Jiraiya inquired, eager to continue their conversation from the previous day it looks like this will be a lot of fun okay, I will become the fifth Hawkage, Tsunade said, bringing joy to Goku and Niruko, who knew their mission had been a success, these children are quite amusing, I truly believe I'm making the right decision, thought the Sanin, observing Goku and Niruko celebrating, Already late that night, in a hotel, everyone agreed that, because of what had happened, they needed some rest before returning to Kanoha well, Goku and I will share a room, Niruko, announced, taking Goku's arm, what, why Shizun questioned it's clear that husbands and wives sleep together, Niruko replied, surprising Tsunade, and Shizun, who saw the two of them as mere children what happens is that the brat made a loyalty, packed with Kanoha, Jiraiya chimed in, scratching his backside with semi-serrated eyes, he headed to the hotel room he had booked, and fell asleep a loyalty pact. Perfect, Shizun thought. Wearing a cunning smile she knew what this loyalty pact entailed and its consequences I also want to sleep with the adorable Goku, Shizun said, raising her hand as if she wanted to hug him like a stuffed animal, while they slept Shizun, leave them alone, Sunade said, grabbing her, disciple shirt collar, and pulling her away. What a shame for your information, Goku and I are used to sleeping very comfortably, Niruko taunted Shizun as she entered her room with the Saiyan subsequently. Both Goku and Yuzumaki slept, peacefully in their bed, exhausted from their battle with the evil Orochimaru. But surprisingly, the door to their room slowly creaked open, revealing Shizun, who had picked the lock. I just need to grab him, and make my escape. Tsunade's disciple whispered to herself. She brought a rope and a gag, planning to kidnap Goku for herself. Bon appetit. Shizun whispered as she lifted the bedsheets to carry out her plan. Ah Shizun screamed, which alerted Tsunade, who rushed, her aid what's going on ah the Sanin asked, also screaming why does this always happen when we sleep Goku complained in annoyance while he slept in just his boxers it's, 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 it's because they're naked, Shizun said, her, voice filled with alarm I'm sorry, but I've been used to sleeping naked with my husband, it's very comfortable, Niruko replied arrogantly showing off her body as if she were born that way you're as degenerate as Lady Tsunade, Shizun muttered, her face flushed with embarrassment, before receiving a strong blow to the head from Tsunade, knocking her out with her eyes spiraling. Can you let the neighbors sleep? Jiraiya shouted from his room, unable to tolerate the commotion any longer. Come on, 
Let's go, Tsunade said, dragging Shizune, and then closing the door. They're so strange, Goku commented. Let them be, let's get back to bed, Niruko said, hugging Goku, who reciprocated the embrace, and they went back to sleep, at the same time and Kanoha Sasuke was resting on a rooftop near the Hawkage Tower, lost in thought when he was suddenly attacked by the members of the Sound 4 Get Ready, pretty boy Teoya screamed as she attacked the Genin by surprise however, Sasuke blocked the attack with his face, I don't know who you are, but I'm not in the mood for this, Sasuke said in a serious and cold voice don't show off, damn brat, cried kid challenging Sasuke to a Teijutsu battle that the Uchiha clearly dominated, leave me alone, you miserable brat, exclaimed, Sasuke furiously as he executed a powerful move, sending Kid crashing into a rooftop that cracked. With the enemy ninja bleeding this brat is stronger than I thought, Kid thought with some surprise, trembling as he struggled to get back. On his feet heads not for nothing that I've been training with that idiot Goku, Sasuke said arrogantly then you wouldn't be interested in learning how to defeat that guy, Sakon said in a tempting and sinister manner, capturing Sasuke's attention. What do you mean, Sasuke inquired? Simply put, if you cooperate with us, I'm sure you can fulfill all your revenge and destruction ambitions, Sakon replied, leaving Sasuke in deep thought, clutching his neck where the curse mark resided. Our master can teach you how to harness the power of that mark effectively. If you do it well, you might even gain power to rival that of Sun Goku, Jirabo added. It sounds intriguing, but I need some time to think about it. Give me a day to consider your offer, Sasuke stated seriously. Don't be foolish. We don't have time for your indecisiveness, Teoya shouted angrily. Shut up, Teoya. We'll grant you a one-day extension, so you can sort out your affairs. But that's it, Sakon said, making the decision to tempt Sasuke further. We're leaving, Sakon said, and the sound four vanished into the twilight, leaving Sasuke behind in contemplation. First, the completion of phase one, Sasuke murmured quietly, breaking the silence from the shadows of a nearby water reservoir emerged Kakashi who, had been observing everything understood, Kakashi replied before heading to the Hawkage Tower, this is my chance to explore the outside world, and I won't waste it, Sasuke thought, recalling what had transpired at the Hawkage Tower, flashback, Hawkage Tower, Sasuke was in a meeting with the Hawkage, and Kakashi he had volunteered for a highly dangerous and potentially suicidal mission, are you sure about this, Sasuke, Hiruzen asked, yes, my mother has already given me her permission, replied the Uchiha the mission of infiltration and espionage is extremely perilous even Itachi endured horrendous trials to complete it, Kakashi cautioned, attempting to dissuade his student, I intend to prove that I can accomplish the same as Itachi furthermore, I'm not doing this just for Konoha, I aim to recover Goku's genetic material and uncover more about that lunatic's experiments this is also my chance to search for a cure for this curse mark on my neck, Sasuke stated with determination his desire to rid himself of the curse mark driving him, I also want to explore the world, and Trey. To become stronger I've heard that there are many formidable opponents out there waiting to be challenged, Sasuke added, providing further context to his decision, I understand, I can see that you're resolute, here is an acknowledged Sasuke Uchiha, I hereby promote, you to the rank of Chunin for this critical mission, period, you will be branded a traitor, pursued, vilified, and cursed by the village, but it is abundantly clear that upon your return, the only word to describe you will be hero do you understand what this entails? Yes, I understand, Sasuke replied, removing the Kanoha headband from his forehead and placing it on the Hakage's desk Sasuke Uchiha, your mission is to infiltrate Orochimaru's forces and the Sound Village, retrieve Saiyan DNA that Orochimaru has stolen, seek out new weapons created from this blood, and if the opportunity arises, eliminate Orochimaru, I command it, here is an ordered, End of flashback. I'm nervous, but I can't turn back now. This is my opportunity to explore the world and become stronger, to the point where I can face Itachi and Goku without any regrets, Sasuke thought, smiling as he gazed at Moon, eagerly anticipating the adventures and people he would encounter on this new path. The next day, 5 a.m. in Kanoha, Sasuke left his home after bidding farewell to his mother despite the pain of parting with another child. She understood that this was Sasuke's choice and his desire to grow as a shinobi, she let him go with her blessings. Good luck, my little one, Mikoto whispered, bidding farewell to her son as she watched him exit the door, as Sasuke descended the stairs of the apartment building. Kakashi awaited the Uchiha, ready to exchange a few last words. Are you leaving? Kakashi inquired quietly. Yes, I want to ask you a favor. I know it goes against the Hakage's orders, 
but I don't want to depart like this anymore. Please give these to the three of them, Sasuke requested, handing Kakashi three letters with the names of his team's seven teammates written on them. All right, I'll deliver them, Kakashi replied, taking the letters and keeping them with suspicion. Kakashi, thank you for everything, Sasuke said with difficulty in a low voice as he continued on his way, without looking back. Do your best, Kakashi thought, bidding farewell to his disciple in his mind minutes later. On the outskirts of Kanoha the Sound 4 awaited Sasuke's decision you're late, Sakon commented as he observed Sasuke's arrival. Anyway, let's go Sasuke replied, wearing a backpack that signaled his intention to join them. Perfect, then let's return to Lord Orchimaru, Sakon ordered, leaping into the trees followed by his companions. Well let's begin, this is my mission period. Goodbye Kanoha, Sasuke thought as he took one last look at the village before leaping into the trees to follow the renegade ninjas. Half a day later, on the outskirts of Kanoha, Goku, Jiraiya, and Niruko returned to the village with Tsunade and Shizune. They were greeted with cheers, music, and confetti as the new Hakage arrived, accepting the village's affection with a mix of embarrassment and nervousness. Come on, don't be nervous, the wise pervert encouraged Tsunade. Shut up. I'm not nervous, Tsunade retorted, somewhat annoyed that Jiraiya was partly correct about her feelings. Suddenly, a large smoke screen emerged in the distance rapidly approaching them. What is that? Sunade asked, narrowing her eyes to get a better look. Ah, that's your new worst nightmare, Jiraiya answered, and from the smoke emerged members of Goku's harem who pounced on the Saiyan like wild animals. They tackled him in a dramatic and exuberant fashion. This is going to hurt me, Goku thought as he was engulfed by the six girls, who hugged him as if trying to squeeze the stuffing out of him. We missed you so much, my love, the six Kunoichis exclaimed clinging to him as if they were trying to claim him for themselves. I missed you all a lot too Goku managed to utter, his face turning purple from the crushing embrace. They look like animals in heat, Sunade commented, greatly surprised and somewhat flustered. Animals don't behave like that just for reproduction. I'd say they seem more like crazed nymphomaniacs, Jiraiya added, responding to his former teammate's observation. Darn it, Goku, you're just one of those blood-sucking creatures that prey on innocent women to make them slaves. Kiba shouted from a distance, watching with jealousy as the scene unfolded. Do you mean a vampire? Shino asked, raising an eyebrow. Yes, those, Kiba declared loudly. What a ridiculous and absurd thing to say Sakura retorted. Besides, he couldn't suck our blood. Since all of us are no longer virgins, Aino said. But she couldn't finish talking as all the girls, including Hinata, blushed like tomatoes and covered her mouth. But it was too late. Everyone heard what she was attempting to say. The villagers, clan leaders, team leaders, and even the hawkage were left in shock, while the distant cawing of crows could be heard. It's exactly what you were expecting. We lived together for a month and a half. There's no need to be prudish, Enko chimed in, her cheeks flushed. How strange. I thought it was the most natural thing when you're married. Goku asked with an innocent expression. He quickly noticed that Jiraiya, Kiba, and the parents of the girls were sent flying through the air. About a hundred jealous men with their eyes rolling back and seemingly lifeless, attempted to attack him. Kill Goku! All the men in the village shouted in madness. Girls, protect Goku! Niruko cried out, and all the Kunoichis jumped into the fray resulting in pandemonium as they engaged in a chaotic brawl. My presentation has turned into chaos. Sunade muttered as she shielded herself from the mayhem. The village's debts will keep increasing. Hiruzen thought as he watched everyone brawl, with people flying through the air or lying unconscious on the ground. He was protected by his Anbu guards. Daddy, it's my body, and I can do whatever I want with it. Aino shouted as she delivered a clean punch to a man who could no longer defend himself. Miss I'm not your father, the semi-conscious man stammered. This surprised Yamanaka, who had only attacked anyone in front of her. Damn old man, you had it coming. Sakura exclaimed as she applied a jackhammer piledriver to Jiraiya, leaving him with his head buried in the ground. If this is about the inn, it was your fault for not knocking, was the last vulgar remark the perverted sage made before convulsing and falling apart on the battlefield that Kanoha's streets had become. At the same time, the other girls of Goku's harem fought against the men, behaving like demonic Amazons as they fiercely protected Goku. He didn't move a muscle and simply observed everything in silence. Wow it's a full-scale brawl, Kanahamaru remarked, watching with his team from a distance. Hey, where are you going? Udon asked. To join in the fun, just for fun, Moji replied, advancing toward the fight with a rusty kitchen knife and lifeless eyes. No you don't, the two aspiring genins shouted, 
restraining her with a hug to prevent her from making things worse. Kanoha Village, the next morning. The morning newspaper, distributed at 6 a.m., featured a headline article titled Brutal Brawl at the 5th Hokage's Presentation. The cult of Sun Goku publicizes his sexual life across the village, leading to jealousy, violence, and numerous arrests. At the same time, in Kanoha Prison, Hibiki Morino walked through the cells, where several of those arrested during the previous day's brawl were held. It's freezing, Kiba complained, his face covered in scratches. This is hell, Kizushi Hiruno grumbled, checking a tooth he lost during a blow from his own daughter. How strange, I don't feel cold, Goku remarked from the neighboring cell. He was accompanied by his entire harem, who hugged him with hearts floating above their heads and slept comfortably beside him. Shut up, you damn idiot, Inoichi shouted, rubbing a bump on his forehead. Why does this always happen to me? Jureya lamented as he was struck by the other inmates through the cell window bars. Meanwhile, in Universe 7, in Goku's dimension, an unusual spaceship approached Earth slowly and discreetly. Inside, three hooded figures conversed. Their faces remained hidden. We are about to arrive, the tallest, muscular figure announced. Perfect. I think it's time for a little introduction, said the infant-like figure. And we'll see how strong you are, Vegeta, added the third figure a thin and enigmatic man. 